Morning, Bobby. This poem uh, originated uh, as a story by Mike Harding, um, who wrote about the the, uh, the closing of the mills in Rochdale and things like that, and the poverty that came thereafter. Um, so I rewrote it as a poem in, about Preston Pans, uh, about when the pits shut in the late 50s and early 60s, and um, poverty kind of ensued, dogs were cast out into the streets to fend for themselves. It was uh, it was quite a tough time. Um, and the reason for putting it together was we used to do gigs in care homes and things like that, and we needed something that could stimulate the audience. Um, and we discovered that talking about people or places from their past, or not so much their childhood, but from their past, uh, got the best reaction. Also, swearing, the light, if you added a wee bit of swearing in it, particularly the women. Um, there's some characters in it uh, that you need expl explaining if you're no further pans or that area. Uh, Rab's story was a, a man that kept pigeons still in the pans yet. Um, Preston Athletic is the local junior football club. Cosser uh, Brun was the local Bobby. And he was a terrific Bobby. He would kick your ass and send you home, uh, but very, very well respected. Uh, Johnny Antonelli was the chip shop at the bottom pans, and he had a relation with the same kind of chip shop at the top pans. Sam Burns, uh, Sam Burns is still there to this day. I, I don't know quite how to describe Sam Burns. Um, house clearances, rag and bone man, antiques dealer, you name it. Um, and Ayers Wind is this kind of main crossroads in the bottom pans. Um, if you were to go east for there, you would come to Preston Pan Cemetery. And if you go to the west along the shore for considerable distance, you come to Seafield Crematorium. All parts of the poem. So it's called Grandad's First Funeral, and it goes like this. It was black as a picnic on Medium Hill Bing the day that my granddad dropped deed. Work was as scarce as rocking horse shite. No, a church roof for miles had lead. It was that called that the flame on our canal got frozen yin Wednesday night. We had to warm it up in the oven afore we could get it to licht. Some brass monkeys sang carol soprano outside. You could hear them all cursing and swearing as they won it round lost in the cold and the frost because they couldn't find their bearings. On Sunday... We were chicken for dinner. It was a pigeon off Rab Stories Duke it. But my dad pumped it up with a bike pump hour hard and it buggered off afore we could cook it. What will we have for tea now, da? asked her mother, picking her nose. Hard boiled eggs will do me, said my da. You can't get your fingers in those. You see, we couldn't afford to kill our chicken, so we used to boil water up hot and with bunches of peas tied round its knees. It paddled about on the top. My granddad had mortgaged his pension till 2024, while my gran in her vest was doing her best with a red light up in the coal cellar door. I can't stand him here, cried my dad, and a mad light shone in his glassy. Leave the fraud the insurance. I want young volunteer for a day. Well, my ma said she went, but she was busy. Our Tam's library book was due back. June said she would, but her and her mates had got tickets for Preston's next match. So we drew lots to settle the matter, but in that there was never no doubt, for my dad cut my grandas in half with a breed knife, just as he was pulling it out. I'm our old diddy, he cried, as he tried to nip out for a jar. All right, says my dad, you don't need a dee, just lie down and kid on that you are. So my granda lay down on the hearth rug, my ma got the doctor in. My gran tain out a bottle and some glasses and got him smashed on her handmade gin. He said, your father has died an unusual death, a rare case of tropical frostbite. And as he staggered out, we all heard a shout because he slipped and he fell in some dug shite. Now, I'm sorry about that, but there's really no very much that rhymes with frostbite. Well, know that you can slip in anyway. Our Tam ran round for the man for the prue. Gran got him smashed on her handmade gin. 
he paid out four pound ten in vouchers for Johnny's and said, When are you burying him? Oh, we wasn't thinking on burying, said my gran. I'd rather stuff him myself, or wrap him in some of your cling fillum stuff and keep him up on the big mantel shelf. <laughs> no, no, that's illegal, said the man for the prue. Fred, Grandad'll need to be buried, in a box in a shroud and consecrated ground. At this, <laughs> Grandad looked a bit worried. Now the man for the prue said he'd come to the cemetery just to make sure that things was done right. And as he staggered out, we all heard the shout, because he slipped in some of that stuff I told you about earlier. The doctor laughed and says, I just did that. So the insurance man rubbed his nose in it. So, the pretend corpse had to be buried. So my dad got an old kipper crate. When the holes had been plugged in the wood, it looked good. With the plastic brass handles on, great. We'll only bury you just till he's gone, then we'll dig you up. Honest, Dad said. <laughs> Tain a bottle of gin for the bugger would ye in and lie in the box and play dead. My gran looked in the box and said, Oh, what a lovely corpse. Saw tears fell on her dripping and toast. Till the body at rest stuck a hand up her vest, saying, Now then, <laughs> how's that for a ghost? Well, we lifted the box onto Sam Burns's cart, and off to the cemetery we set. We followed on bikes and all went quite right till another burying we met. Cosser Brun was direct in the traffic. Ayers wind had a fault with the lights. As he fell to the ground, arms flaying around. Cos he slipped in some of that stuff, I know. I know if he dugs in the pans. As Big Cos hit the ground, the traffic flew round and the twelve burians got in a jam. Their driver took a poke at my dad with a wrench and got a kick in the nuts through her tam. Well, when we sorted it out, we'd got the wrong box. We'll see they marrow him, my gran squealed. When their driver came round, our burying we found had gone to the creme at Sea Field. <laughs> well, when we got there, the service was finished, and the organ did solemnly play as the congregation wet hankies and sniffed and our kipper box went on its way. The shutters were open. We could all hear the flames. We'll see you in heaven! June yelled, as a kipper box with its arse end on fire ran off of the conveyor belt. Out o'er the pews and out through the back door, our burning kipper box ran, and we all cheered with glee as it jumped in the sea, followed close by my dad and my mum. It's a blessed miracle, said my gran, but the man for the prue went quite white. Ruined, he roared. He would have said more, but he slipped in some of that shite. Thank you. Stay in. Stay safe and enjoy your life. Cheers, friends. Bye, bye.